Post choruses are probably the most modern song section of all because really they've had quite the rise in the last 10 years and pre-choruses are something that were popular even before that. So it's important to know how on earth do we write a post chorus. In this video we're going to talk about how to write a post chorus in three easy steps. So really quick before we get into the three steps we need to establish what a post chorus is and what its purpose is. And at a high level what it is 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 a song section that happens after the chorus and fundamentally belongs to the chorus in the way that a pre-chorus is not a post-verse. It's called a pre-chorus. There's a reason for that. Even though very often a pre-chorus does happen after the verse, it is a song section that specifically is meant to lead into the chorus. And a post-chorus is something that is specifically meant to sort of continue the chorus party a little bit longer. So you can sort of see a post-chorus as, hey, you liked that chorus, huh? Here's a little more chorus for you. Or a very common analogy is something like an after party or you could see it as an encore to a concert. You saw the 10 songs that were the main concert and then there's that little encore performance. A post chorus is basically that for a chorus. You had a 20 second chorus that's pretty awesome so you want to get 10 more seconds out of that awesomeness so you have a post chorus which keeps that party going just a little bit longer. All right so let's talk about how to write one in three really simple steps. One great first step is simply to double down on the chord progression of the chorus. So certainly this is not always the case, but it is very common that a post chorus so much so doubles down on the chorus that it actually keeps the exact same chord progression. And because it is supposed to be essentially a section that keeps that chorus party going a little bit longer, it makes sense to double down on the chord progression you already have. Now something good to do is to change something up arrangement wise though. So for example, if your bass was just doing whole notes or one note per measure, maybe now doing an eighth note pattern to just give a little bit more of a rhythm to this section or changing up how you play the piano part or changing up how you play the guitar chords might go a long way just to make it so that yes the chord progression is the same but the arrangement of the chord progression changes a little bit to maybe add even a little bit more energy or of course if you are arranging or producing your song you also can add an instrument or two. Step two is to basically throw out your chorus melody and instead replace it with with a hook. Now a somewhat reductionist but also somewhat accurate view of a post chorus is that very often a post chorus is essentially copying and pasting your chorus but then you throw out the melody of the chorus and instead put in a more simplistic hook. Or instead to take the main hook line from the chorus melody and just basically use that over and over again for the post chorus. So let's quickly cover what I mean by a hook versus a melody. I think a good way to break this down is that it's somewhat analogous to something like a theme versus a motif. A theme is something that is a little bit more of a full melody. You would have something like Darth Vader's theme, but a motif is something that just suggests that theme. It very often is just one phrase from the longer theme. So in the same way, a chorus melody is something that might have three different phrases in an A, B, A, C pattern. So it's four total phrases, but the A pattern's repeated, and then you have the B and the C pattern. But a hook is very often something that is shorter and simpler and to the point. A hook is really by definition something that is meant to hook the listener by sort of sticking in their heads. So that tends to mean that it's going to be something that's very simple and very short. And very often, depending on the genre, this hook might even be something that isn't a vocal melody. In fact, in EDM, they made a lot of use of having the vocal melody in the chorus, but then in the post-chorus, that's where the synth lead came in. And then in pop music, very often it is a vocal hook, but it is one line repeated over and over again. Examples of this would be something like Attention by Charlie Puth or Shape of You by Ed Sheeran. In both of those, there essentially is one line or one phrase that repeats over and over and over again in the post-chorus. So something to consider here is to ask yourself, is there a specific melody or melodic phrase in your chorus that you'd really like to double down on? Maybe the last line of your chorus is something where you just think the melody is really awesome. So maybe you want to essentially utilize that over and over again now as the hook for your post chorus. Or you want to take that melodic line you really like and make a more hook-like version of it that's a little more simplified and utilize that over and over in your post chorus. So if you opted to have your melodic hook be something like a guitar or a synth, then actually it was two steps. You're already pretty much done. But if you did decide to have it be a vocal hook, we're now probably concerned about the lyrics. It's 
good to ask yourself, what is the main theme or main idea of these lyrics? Because almost certainly you want the vocal hook to be doubling down on one of the central ideas of the song. A post-chorus almost always utilizes a good amount of repetition, and repetition naturally creates emphasis. We don't want to emphasize something that's totally tangential or not really that important to our song. We want to instead emphasize something that makes sense to emphasize within the context of our song. An example of this is Can't Stop the Feelin' by Justin Timberlake, where actually that song title isn't anywhere else in the song but in the post-chorus. So the post-chorus is actually where the song title comes from, not even the chorus. Or back to Charlie Puth's attention, he asks, what are you doing to me? What are you doing, huh? Which is very connected to the idea of you just want attention. Even though you're never going to be with me, you want to make sure that I still am in love with you or I'm still distracted by you. So he's asking, what are you doing to me? Which makes sense because that's a part of that central idea of you just want attention. What are you doing to me? Why are you just trying to get my attention when you don't actually want to be with me? So overall, the really simple way to write a post-chorus is to just borrow the chord progression from the chorus and just keep it going and then replace the melody with a very, very simple hook that may or may not have lyrics. But if it does have lyrics, it probably is very simple lyrics. So hopefully you found this helpful. If you did something else you'll likely find helpful is my free guide, Breaking Down Song Sections More In Depth, talking about what each songwriting section really is and some of the goals of those song sections to give you a little bit more clarity on what we want from a chorus versus what we want from a pre chorus or a post chorus or a bridge. So be sure to check that out. Thank you so much for watching. I appreciate every single one of you. I'll talk to you in the next one.